her dress and the clothing takes the form of a small yacht. You can see the triangular sail and the mast coming out of that area the child's knees would be. This is very similar to a number of portraits of Picasso's eldest daughter holding a small sailing boat. Picasso identified with the idea of being a sailor. If you can see that little yacht there, hidden in the clothing, this is an important element of the autobiographical nature of Guernica. That falling figure is a self-portrait of Picasso. Picasso had a long forelock. It can be seen in photographs. So the raised arms are referential to crucifixion and also to death. So this symbol or motif is referential to death and hence its association with crucifixion and so on. That is a self-portrait. It relates back to the little girl in the boat because in the studies he's wearing a sailor's shirt, one of these striped sailor's shirts that Picasso was often seen wearing in the 1950s and 60s. You know, he loved to play on the idea of being a sailor. There's even a photograph of him dressed up as Popeye. He loves cartoons. Guernica is actually a cartoon. Picasso was a cartoonist. He did a lot of cartoonish depictions in his notebooks and so on. He's really extended this idea of modern art into the realm of cartoons. Picasso was standing beneath the completed painting in exactly the position of the falling man. He's identifying with that falling character. So that is a self-portrait. So right at the center, dominating Guernica in a subliminal sense, we have a skull. Picasso had a tendency in his more important paintings to conceal skulls. Death, of course, is incorporated into the idea of the crucifixion into the bullfight. It's been incorporated in a way that doesn't make it obvious. He tends to interrupt the outline with other features and so on. So there you have the hidden skull at the center of Guernica. There's another hidden skull on the nose of the horse. Now in line with the idea of Guernica being a cartoon, we have the idea of puppetry. Picasso had been involved in the production of puppet shows in Barcelona at El Catregat. Harlequin becomes a symbol of Picasso. It's associated with the god Mercury, Picasso's principal alter ego, who in the, the Hermetic tradition adopted the Harlequin. He gave him magical powers. And one of his most important powers was the power over death. Here we have in Guernica a concealed image of Harlequin. This Harlequin's fairly obvious with the gray tones, coming out from around the woman's head. Within that, he's in the harlequin oh, hat. So it's wearing great. a long-nosed mask. You can see one of the eye apertures of the mask, the general outline of the head, and the suggestion of the hat. That long-nosed Italian mask is characteristic of the type of mask that was worn in the Commedia dell'arte. Now in this we see the portrait of Picasso and the triangular feature of the hat. There's a sort of peak to the hat which has the appearance of a crocodile's jaw. There's a small building there that looks as if it's in flames with a window. Picasso's sort of heading in that direction. He's falling towards it. Now that's the harlequin's mouth. You can't see his eyes, but uh, you can see Picasso. That little cubicle building is of course a, a puppet theater. And then you can see the suggestion of the harlequin's shoulders and his characteristic collar. He's got this sort of pointed collar quite often in Picasso depictions. In this image, I've selected another Harlequin. He's kneeling down and he's got his arms outstretched, supporting himself, leaning forward. And you can see his triangular hat and the profile of his jaw and the front of his face, as if he's part of the audience watching the puppet show. I've seen this very same pose in 19th century paintings of Punch and Judy puppet shows where children are in exactly this position watching Punch and Judy theatre. You can see this just from looking at the painting once you're aware that it's there. This hair sort of coming out from below the right side of his hat. You can see the two eye apertures. I've gone across some of the little areas that interrupt the outline but the general outline of this face is present in the composition. There's some characteristic elements to this that uh, suggest this is a giant head of Harlequin. And one of the main things is this black and white diamond 
It appears to be a teardrop falling from the harlequin's eye as if he's grieving over the victims of this tragic bombing. At the time Picasso was painting Guernica, he carried around a large paper teardrop and he was kind of obsessed with placing this under the eye of the bull. But of course it doesn't appear in the finished painting. But what we get instead is a magical teardrop, the symbol of Harlequin, positioned directly under one of these dark eyes, hidden within the bent leg of the horse, directly under its abdomen. We have the impression of a bull's head, the aperture of the eye in the right location, the nostril in the correct location, and the shape of the head precisely as one would expect. The bull is putting its head under the abdomen of the horse precisely as it would do if it was going to gore the horse and this is characteristic of the corrida. That aperture of the eye goes on to become the part of an axe head where the shaft is inserted. There's a hidden axe in this painting. The axe is a symbol for the smashing up of things and some sort of chaotic uh, suggestiveness about the symbolism of the axe. It's also a very fascist symbol. It's, uh, it features right at the heart of fascism. It was the symbol, of course, of Rome, suggestions of punishment if you didn't cooperate. This is perhaps the punishment that is being delivered to the people of Guernica. A hidden image of a chicken or a rooster. You can see the tail feathers suggested. Above the rooster's head is a typical Picasso concept, a fish and a bird together. This is a typical Picasso invention. He's done it quite a bit in other pictures where he'll use bird and fish imagery in combination with each other. It seems to go back to a, an 1892 ballet by Eric Satie, where the idea of a bird and fish in combination crops up at the scene of Usbud's crucifixion. So you've got the suggestion of the tail and the beak, the eye, the general shape of the bird, and the leg and the foot, all incorporated into the composition. One of the symbols of the god Mercury is the rooster. A lot of Picasso's earliest pictures were of such things as pigeons and chickens and so on. So it has autobiographical antecedents. These are symbolic magical devices. Identical symbolism, a combination bird-fish image. It's not really an occulted image, although the fish could be said to be partially occulted. The suggestion of the fish's tail is incorporated into the bird tail. The body of the suggested fish is picked out in a different colour. You can see the mouth clearly indicated with teeth in it and the lips and so on and the rest of the head. Picasso very often incorporated fish into uh, these important works. The fish is a very important symbol for Picasso. He symbolizes himself as a fisherman and of course it has connections with the story of Christ and the Fisher King in Parsifal. Interestingly, the fallen warrior in Guernica would seem to be a representation of another Picasso alter ego who is Parsifal. In the original story, Parsifal is given a sword. He, he can use it once and then it will break. In Guernica we see the broken sword and um, the fallen warrior who would appear to be again in a sort of crucifixion pose although his arm's been severed, clutching the handle of trebuchet. And there are numerous other features within Guernica which I won't discuss on this occasion. The deeper levels to it, there's a sort of climactic end of a Parsifalian Wagnerian battle between Picasso and Hitler taking place between 1934, just after Hitler's rise to power, and 1937 where the bombing of Guernica had taken place. World War II hadn't occurred yet. It's a magical battle whereby Picasso is taking on the role of the guardian knights of the grail and he's attacking Hitler. He's, he's engaging in an occult crusade which many other artists in, were involved with, the surrealists in particular. They engaged in, in, a, in, a, in a sort of occult battle in their works of art against Hitler and the Nazis. Uh, this is a very important 
element in the understanding of Guernica. We've seen a few of the more important hidden images. I'll leave it at that. Guernica isn't the most replete Picasso in terms of hidden imagery. Le Demoiselle takes pride of place. And in many respects, as a, as a work of art, Le Demoiselle could be said to be more important than Guernica. Guernica's importance is more of a political importance. As a work of art per se, Picasso wasn't that satisfied with Guernica, and there are reasons for that. He was pressured, he had to complete it quickly, he didn't have enough time to engage it in the way that I think he would have liked. It was a very publicly uh, created work. He liked to work in secrecy. That way he could employ a lot more hidden imagery. The general consensus is it's a, the most important painting by Pablo Picasso. But as far as Picasso was concerned, Le Demoiselle would have been the crowning glory because he'd accomplished something that was, again, a passion with him, uh, the concealment of, of hidden imagery. He was absolutely obsessed with this at times. He considered it the, a real artistic achievement if people didn't see the hidden imagery. This, to him, was a real accomplishment. In Le Demoiselle, he carries it off with brilliance.